coming. Um, so the aim today is to give you an insight into the field of biophysics um, with this theme of uh, mucus. Um, so uh, a little bit about me, so um, my background. So um, I'm a first year medical student at um, uh, Homerton College and I'm going into second year. Um, okay, so I'll get into the presentation. So just a brief outline. So I'm gonna start with the basic biology and then briefly kind of um, introduce some of these um, biophysical and physical um, concepts as I go through. Um, and I'm going to mainly focus on the um, lung, but I'm going to also um, talk about some other organs. Um, so, yeah, where's um, what is mucus and where is it found? Um, so it's this um, viscoelastic um, gel um, and it's made from um, a, a complex polymer network um, and it's acting as this sort of barrier um, on these um, various um, uh, organ systems um, as well as um, like the eyes and the ears. Um, and it's um, produced by um, uh, tissue specific cells um, on the surface, but also um, in glands. So it has this um, generic role of um, protection in the body. Um, so you can see here at the bottom, um, this is uh, showing um, how uh, uh, various pathogens are, so bacteria are being um, excluded. So um, you can see here that they're only present in the uh, top layer of mucus and they can't permeate um, at all through um, the uh, mucus. Um, and then there's also um, a protection against um, other um, toxins, um, pollutants, um, and also um, mechanical force. Um, then there's also some more um, tissue specific functions. Um, so for example, um, in your eye, um, it's used for um, lubrication so that you can blink. Um, in your stomach, um, it's, it's another protective function, um, but in this case, it's protecting against um, the stomach's own secretions. So um, the stomach secretes um, acid and various enzymes. Um, but you can see here that there's, a, there's this gradient of pH and it's um, making sure that um, the um, epithelia is, um, epithelium is protected um, because a low pH would be bad um, for it. And then there's also um, uh, this role of um, uh, immunity um, in, in mucus. So uh, it has a non-specific and specific um, binding to um, various uh, pathogens. Um, so for example, here, um, it's shown to uh, be breaking up uh, these um, bacteria want to form a biofilm um, in, in which they, they would be more uh, pathogenic, so they would cause a worse disease, um, but this mucus is preventing that. Also in the, um, uh, this is the cervix here, um, in ovulation, um, uh, mucus is more clear and runny, um, but uh, it post ovulation, it becomes um, thick and virtually um, impenetrable. Um, yeah, and then so, but you've also got, um, it's sort of, going back to this um, biofilm idea, uh, so keeping this um, bacteria at bay, so to certain, a certain extent, you want to maintain like um, a microbiome, um, so your oral microbiome and your gut microbiome, so you don't want to completely um, get rid of them um, because they are useful. And so there's a large um, sort of variety, if we go down the um, digestive system here, um, you can see that um, there's a large variation um, in mucus, <clears throat> different mucus layers um, shown by the thickness. Um, and then now we're gonna introduce, so I've not just put candy floss up there for no reason. Um, so this is what a, my idea of what a mucin looks like. So you have this stick, which is the uh, protein, and then you have um, various kind of um, uh, sugars or like carbohydrates attaching to it. It's quite a bad model and it's not um, a model that anyone uses but I just thought it was a bit of fun. Um, and then, so there's two types of, um, a main, uh, two main types of mucins. So you've got um, transmembrane mucins, uh, which I won't be uh, going into that much detail on today. And then also these secretory mucins. And these are the ones that um, you're probably more familiar with, um, with uh, forming uh, mucus. Um, there's also other mucins. So there's actually uh, 21 different uh, genes, uh, uh, upwards of 21 in the, in the body, um, so, and in, in, in different tissues, you have um, a wide variety of um, different mucins uh, being expressed. So, um, for example, in lungs, you have um, this MUC5AC and MUC5B um, are the uh, main ones. Um, and so these are actually among the largest um, uh, biopolymers, uh, ranging from around 500 nanometers to um, a few, uh, to several uh, micrometers in length. Um, and uh, up to around uh, uh, 50 megadaltons in 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 weight um in mass sorry um and so yeah you can look up the uh, daltons is just um a unit uh biologists use to 
uh, for yeah, uh, maths. Um, so refining this model a little bit more. Um, so you've got this sort of um, this stick I was talking about, this protein stick. It's, so it's a it's called an apoprotein core. Um, and so the ends of this um, uh, uh, monomer, um, I guess, of mucus um, are uh, quite cysteine rich. Um, so cysteine is just a um, an amino acid. I'll go on to um, why that's important in a second. Um, and then this second, this um, central bit sort of um, contains uh, many uh, tandem repeats of um, these, uh, pr predominantly of these two amino acids, um, serine and threonine, um, in clusters with another amino acid called proline. Um, and um, the, so the binding to these are these. Uh, so I've just shown some of the uh, glycans. So different um, carbohydrates that can uh, bind to um, these residues um, and for and yeah and they kind of form this brush model so you can see here um, a nice uh, graphic this is for a transmembrane uh, mucin um, but it's very similar for a, a secreted mucin as well um, and so um, there's so you can have um, o, o glycan so that's just um, it binding to the uh, oxygen um, and then uh, N glycans, um, and it's predominantly um, uh, O um, glycosylation. Um, and so you have it's quite densely packed, so there's around uh, 25 to 30 um, of these um, binding per um, 100 um, amino acid residues. And then there's also um, a high sialic acid content and um, uh, sulfate content, uh, which uh, gives it gives um, mucins there a, a, a negative um charge and so that um increases um sort of the, the rigidity in the uh, polymer and um, through uh repulsion and so um a better model than uh this candy floss idea i had is this um uh, bottle brush model which is uh, accepted in the field <clears throat> um so uh yeah so this is a sort of a generic um form of a mucin uh, here's one um uh, that we um, came across before, this Mach 5b. Um, so you can see, uh, it, in general, it has these uh, D domains where this kind of cysteine is, um, and you can see it's it's um, uh, a little bit more complicated complicated in in the actual mucin. Um, you've got um, these orange are like these D domains, and the D domains are important because um, this cysteine allows for um, uh, disulfide uh, bonds to form, and these are the um, only covalent. Um, interactions um, uh, we, uh, in this in this network, um, and so this is the strongest um, type of interaction. So uh, with this um, mucin, you can see there's a lot of different places that that could um, occur. So it's quite complex already. <clears throat> but then you've actually got to take into account that the primary um, form of interaction is sort of entanglement. So there's these protein-protein um, interactions, uh, carbohydrate-carbohydrate interactions, and there's a lot going on there. Um, so it really is quite um, uh, a complicated um, polymer. Um, so basically, these um, this gets really tightly packed into these uh, storage vesicles uh, using calcium to sort of um, shield um, this negative charge. Um, and the uh, uh, when when it's so there's this process of um, exocytosis where this um, vesicle um, kind of fuses with the membrane and releases its contents into uh, the extracellular space. Um, and uh, the um, bicarbonate ions sort of um, drive this expansion by rapidly increasing uh, pH and removing this um, calcium that was previously um, shielding the charges. Um, and that then uh, water then follows and you get this um, really quick um, size expansion. Um, just briefly, um, there's some techniques you can use to look at um, uh, structural analysis. Um, so uh, so this is the Mach 5b again, and these are the two ends. So you're using a single particle electron microscopy and cryo EM. Um, they're just some of the techniques you can use to resolve the structures. And then you can sort of look at um, how uh, that will be uh, binding in this um, complex polymer. But going back to this um, packaging and secretion. Um, so uh, this is a proposed model. Um, so yeah, you can see here the calcium is helping it. Um, kind of become so compact um, and here you can see as it's traveling through the various organelles in the in the cell um, it, it's forming these like um, disulfide bonds um, so in the this is a just it's some images of the expansion going on um, and so uh, at a 
um, the, the basal secretion of, um, so this is the normal rate of secretion for um, mucins, um, uh, it's quite low, um, but actually when it's um, stimulated by the body in, in various um, uh, states, um, it's, it then becomes quite a high um, output. Um, and it's theorized that there's um, different um, isoforms, so there's a slightly different, so it's a similar pathway, but there's different um, proteins then being involved um, when it's then stimulated secretion, um, and that, that might be why um, it, it can be uh, such an upregulated secretion. Um, so there's not just um, there's a, there's many more um, components uh, to mucus, which makes it even yet more complex. Um, so you have um, uh, yeah the the polymer that we've just discussed is then going to be interacting with all of these um, different components. Um, so we had uh, have the electrolyte we briefly talked about, um, but then there's stuff like um, DNA in there. Um, there's um, upwards of around 300 um, proteins, um, mainly involved in the um, innate um, uh, immune defense. Um, and so uh, an example of um, a, uh, um, a protein is listed here as um, secretory um, Im immunoglobulin A. Um, so this is uh, what it looks like. Um, and interestingly, um, it, it um, stays in the mucus uh, for a bit longer than you might expect. And this is because it, it actually has a, um, uh, uh, it's being like kind of, it, it, it's more muco um, like adhesive. So um, it, that, that then improves um, its function um, in the immune uh, response. Um, and so this composition is very uh, tightly regulated um, biochemically and any sort of disruption of this uh, uh, will lead to um, disease. Um, and these these all contribute to the properties of mucus. Um, here are some of the uh, properties uh, briefly listed um, of note. Um, we're going to look at um, uh, the uh, rheology now. So um, it's interesting. So you have to look at it from two different perspectives. I mean, and it's really um, length um, scale dependent. Um, so you've got this macro rheology and micro rheology. Um, rheology is just um, about the like the flow. Um, because it's it, yeah um it's quite um complex so on on this kind of this bulk rheology um it's um acting uh with a non-newtonian viscosity and so <clears throat> it's got a um at low um shear stress uh a shear rate um it's got a strong resistance to deformation but then um at uh um high uh shear, shear rates it's got a weak um resistance um and so uh the Macro rheology is as was the most studied because it's it's sort of easier to study with um, classical uh, techniques. Um, the micro rheology is where you need finer techniques, and that was to do with the uh, clearance and uh, lubrication uh, properties of mucus. But then, when you're looking at the barrier properties, so how different like uh, pathogens um, are going to be interacting with that surface, um, uh, you need to kind of look at it um, from the perspective. The, at the nano scale, and this, and then now it's acting um, uh, sort of a, as a low viscosity um, system. Um, so here is a graph showing um, the kind of linear log relationship um, of different. There are different. I've just listed them down here um, in in different um, yeah systems. So you've got um, tiers here at the bottom, um, and it's that's very similar. So uh, ten to minus three is the uh, viscosity for um, uh, water. Um, so this is sort of the range. Um, and so um, the determinants are predominantly uh, of viscosity are predominantly a uh, mucin concentration um, and a small change in mucin concentration will dramatically um, uh, uh, up, like uh, upregulate or downregulate uh, viscous elasticity. Um, it's quite difficult to measure. Um, there's some techniques I've listed here. Uh, one of them is multiple particle tracking. Um, you need to make sure that the the particles you, that you're tracking um, are sort of um, non muco adhesive, um, as that will kind of affect the results. But you can use um, the mean square distance um, to uh, calculate a diffusion um, coefficient um, to to, um, to elucidate uh, properties. Um, and this is important in designing um, drug delivery systems uh, because you're going to need to cross this um, barrier in, in certain cases. And sometimes you have to use um, uh, nanoparticles in order to sort of package that and then deliver it. 
Um, so another um, uh, property, uh, a few properties of, of mucus is its um, cohesion and adhesion. So um, you need to be able to uh, clear mucus um, because it's got all these um, uh, things trapped in it. Um, but also um, you want to kind of um, retain it um, also um, sometimes. Um, you don't want it to be so um, like flowing that it just kind of leaks into your lungs and just kind of clogs up your lungs. It's not a very pleasant thought. Um, and so, um, so yeah, after you, so it undergoes a lot of these different um, she uh, shearing forces. Um, so you've got the cough here and it actually, the um, bonds that we were talking about sort of uh, reform um, within a space of minutes to um, hours um, afterwards. And so, um, yeah, when we're talking about trying to clear mucus, we either have to um, overcome the adhesion or, or the cohesion um, or both. Um, and so this experiment uh, was just showing, so they used a, a peel test here, you can see um, where they were just using a force sensor uh, to kind of pull up the mucus from the um, uh, uh, from this layer. Um, and, uh, and, and so, um, yeah, that was to test the ad adhesion strength. And then here they were just pulling the mucus um, away from itself um, to test the uh, cohesion. Um, interestingly, um, they found here that the uh, properties of both um, uh, adhesion and cohesion were um, dominated by um, a, the uh, viscous dissipation. So that's like um, uh, heating up um, from uh, when you're kind of applying a force. Um, so now looking at the um, pathology, um, so I've kind of summarized a few things that can go wrong here. So um, your concentration of um, various mucins can be um, upset. Um, so that can be too little or too low, uh, too little or too high, um, depending on the tissue. Um, and then uh, you can have, um, yeah, the composition can also be, um, the rest of the composition can be dysregulated. And then also um, the cilia can be going uh, wrong. Um, We've also got there's just a list of um, different uh, pathologies at the bottom as well. Um, one interesting thing um, is so there was a 2005 Nobel Prize uh, for Physiology or Medicine uh, where they discovered the role of Helicobacter pylori um, in um, uh, causing uh, gastric um, ulcers. Um, so the it's um, you're often told in uh, various biology lectures of the story of uh, Barry Marshall. Um, one of the Nobel laureates uh, then cu um, culturing uh, the uh, bacterium and uh, um, ingesting it in order to uh, prove, because this was largely against the um, belief uh, at the time. Um, so um, it, there's a few things going on here um, and I don't wanna get too far into it, but one of the interesting things is that the bacteria is using um, the gastric mu mucus um, to sort of benefit itself. Um, so it secretes, um, um, because you can see here, yeah, we talked about this pH gradient. It wants to sort of be surviving um, at this neutral um, pH rather than being um, uh, aggressively attacked um, uh, in, the, in the stomach lumen. Um, so uh, it secretes this uh, enzyme called urease, um, and that's going to um, uh, degel the mucus, um, interestingly, so that it can swim through um, with its little uh, flagella. Um, easier um, to get down to the uh, epithelium. So now um, we're going to look at um, uh, just uh, focus on the uh, lungs, so diseases in the lungs. Um, if we just start with smoking, um, so uh, smoking actually um, uh, uh, shortens, uh, slows um, cilia, um, and as well as uh, decreasing the uh, viscosity of mucus um, because it increases uh, your uh, sulfur mucin um, and uh, as, as uh, um, compared to your uh, silo mucin. And so this is kind of, uh, this um, weakening of the uh, effectiveness of, of mucus is just opening up to uh, chronic um, infection. And then so another thing where you, another uh, pathology where you get chronic infection is cystic fibrosis. And um, there's just two forms of uh, treatment down here for cystic fibrosis. Um, it's quite an unpleasant um, condition. Um, and a lot of actually um, uh, study of mucus um, has been, uh, um, the, the science has been largely driven by uh, a CF. Um, so CF is where um, this, so there's this uh, transporter, this chloride transporter called um, CTFR, um, and it also 
um, transports um, these um, uh, bicarbonate ions um, that we were uh, talking about before that are um, necessary in driving the expansion of uh, mucus uh, after it's been secreted. Um, and so uh, you're going to basically, without that, um, you're without bicarb, you're just going to um, have a very thick, dense mucus, and these um, cilia um, are just not going to be able to uh, uh, do anything about that, um, and you will just get very stationary uh, mucus. Um, so actually, in, in CF, um, you have um, upregulated uh, maybe, uh, so the concentration of mucus to water is maybe five to ten times the ratio, um, and also the, the viscoelasticity um, approaches um, that of uh, rubber. And so this is going to impede airflow um, and, like I said before, um, allow microbes to thrive. Um, interestingly, um, the body's response um, uh, is to um, chuck a load of uh, neutrophils, um, but actually uh, these neutrophils um, are going to get lysed and uh, so they just they kind of are going to get broken up. And they, when they get broken up, they release their contents, including DNA. And so DNA, I mentioned before, is one of the components of um, uh, mucus just from various cells just dying. It's a natural process. Um, but here you get a lot of mucus and you don't, well, you don't actually need that much. But then that's going to further make the mucus. Um, uh, so you get a lot of DNA. Uh, uh, yeah. And then that's going to make the, the mucus uh, a lot um, thicker on top of that. Um, so yeah, uh, if we're just looking here, um, we've just got, uh, you can see the cilia height is decreasing and also the mucus cilia transport, the, the, the speed, um, as you increase the uh, concentration of mucins, uh, this is all uh, decreasing. So I've got two videos here. Um, this is normal cilia beating um, and this is in cystic fibrosis. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this is all kind of going back to the uh, mucus ciliary escalator. So um, you, you're kind of um, uh, wafting up in a synchronous fashion uh, all of this mucus uh, from your trachea and you're um, wafting it down from your nose. Um, and then that's going to go to your pharynx where it's then um, going to be subconsciously swallowed. Um, and so you can see here, this is just some bead um, tracking um, to show the speed of that. And these are some other um, schematics. Um, so there's there's this short sort of um, gel on brush model that's been described um, in this paper. Um, so you're separating, um, this is contrary to the former belief, um, but you're basically separating um, the mucus layer into um, a layer of sort of gel-like mucus um, that traps the microbes and also into the, uh, what we call the PCL, the periciliary layer. Um, here you can see it's, it's only seven um, micrometers uh, thick. Um, and this is going to be ideal for the um, cilia to uh, beat through and also um, to, to kind of uh, lubricate the, uh, the uh, surface layer. And some evidence of this uh, periciliary layer, you can see uh, MUC1 and MUC4 that we discussed as the transmembrane mucins. Um, uh, they're kind of localizing to this um, epithelium. Um, so the, so the, um, there's an osmotic um, pressure kind of at play here. So um, the the um, transmembrane mucins are very densely uh, grafted, and so they have um, this. They have a lot of repulsion that we were talking about. Um, there's there's this overall sort of negative um, charge. Um, so uh, this repulsion is going to be acting against the um, osmotic pressure of the um, of the mucus layer on top, and uh, essentially. Um, what what in a in a healthy state um you want to keep the um periciliary layer at a higher osmotic pressure um and then so uh, yeah this is just defining the um mesh size um there's also so the osmotic modulus is important here so uh, this is the water drawing power of the system um which you can um calculate uh, from the osmotic pressure and the concentration um so then um just looking at this mesh kind of so as you go down the um, mesh size decreases you can see this with these um, various probes here um, you can see that um, the probes this is, this is the distance they're making it from the uh, from the surface and you can see as the size decreases then they get closer to the surface um, so uh, basically um, yeah it's the, um, you have at the top um, a 
um, this uh, in normal conditions a two percent mucin dry weight, and that's fulfilling the um, balance. So the osmotic pressure is going to be greater on the bottom. But for example, in um, pathologies where you might go to like eight percent mucin dry weight, um, this is going to um, then uh, collapse. Um, so here's a nice uh, little um, image of uh, a little schematic of how um, it might. Uh, yeah of how it looks so you can see here um interesting to note um so this is yeah this is the collapsing initially the water is drawn out of the mucus but then it's um also drawn out of the periciliary layer um and the cilia just kind of um become less effective as we saw in that video um and then interesting the interestingly as you add uh, water um the uh the periciliary layer stays the same and there's it's thought that there's a uh, a bit of a um sort of a, a, a it's not working at its um, optimal viscoelasticity to sort of uh, be removing that layer um, and it's thought that in a disease state um, the uh, body can then upregulate um, so that it's then reaching that optimal state um, just so it can then deal with the um, pathogen for example and then return to a normal state um, so yes um, and then so I'm briefly just going to divert um, just yeah, temporarily to looking at. Um, I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate. I'm uh, coming to the end now. Um, so this is just um, the. So yeah, the silly I was talking about. So this is um, the ax um, axoneme, and so that's comprised of uh, these these tubules um, around. So there's nine tubules in this ring, um, and there's uh, two tubules in the centre, and they're all tethered together. Um, and so basically uh, you have these uh, dinine um, uh, proteins uh, that are walking, in the, they're surrounded in the clockwise fashion, and they're walking between, well, they're not, yeah, they're, they're ATP is uh, causing them to uh, change conformation. And so they're essentially walking and dragging. Um, you can imagine this uh, microtubule is pulling itself onto that one um, to, to go um, higher. Um, and so you get a sliding kind of thing. There's this sort of um, this paper nicely describes um, this uh, uh, new model, this um, switch inhibition mechanism. So basically, at any one time, you have um, one side of the cilia um, has um, active um, denine, and then the other side has inactive denine. So you get the sliding only occurs on one side, and then that's just going to um, kind of pull the cilia one way. Um, and so I'll just show it in the next. Um, uh, slide how that works and um, but briefly just to touch on um, some cilia actually many cilia in the body don't have this um, these central tubules and um, uh, instead um, so they basically um, don't um, they don't move um, and also um, there's so you can have a genetic uh, genetically inherited conditions um, which are called ciliopathies um, and so one of them is um, primary cilia dyskinesia, and so that's um, an inefficient sort of uh, this this motion here, uh, which I'll show. Uh, this is from a tadpole, uh, dorsal fin. And um, so you um, in primary cilia dyskinesia, you either have a an inefficient um, uh, functioning of this. You can see this beating. It's got a power stroke and then a recovery stroke, um, but it's going quite quick. Um, so these these. Um, denying uh, proteins are walking quite quick um, but basically this is then either inefficient or um, all of the cilia are not working together synchronously so you can imagine if one is just um, beating at the wrong time yeah it, it can get, get quite messed up so um, it's important that the flow is only in one direction uh, this is a flagellum which kind of has a helical thing that's unrelated but also interesting um, so you can study um, there are different ways to study um, mucus experimentally. Um, so you can, yeah, you can sample it from a patient. Um, you can use an, an animal model. So you can see here this fish is being like uh, the mucus is being scraped off, or obviously slugs. Um, and then, yeah, there's also um, tissue culture um, and uh, bio mimetics. Um, and that's fairly self-explanatory. You're kind of engineering something to um, to look the same. Um, but there's a whole host of different problems um, with all with all of these models. Um, so yeah, um, it's quite a hard thing to study. And this is a uh, lab 
uh, virtual lab project um, I did the summer. So this is just an example of you can use a, um, this is Xenopus tropicalis, which is the Western um, clawed frog. It's in its tadpole uh, form. So you're um, infecting it with a bacterium, uh, doing then the whole um, organism RNA sequencing to just see the um, different expression. So uh, we was, I was specifically looking for which uh, genes were being upregulated relating to um, um, mucus. Um, so using R and then making some graphs. Um, so then briefly just talking about um, therapeutic intervention. So there's a number of different pathways that we talked about um, that you could target. Um, so you can target, yeah, um, how it's secreted. So <clears throat> if you don't want as much um, to be secreted, for example, um, you could just yeah, be blocking that. Um, or for example, um, uh, there are various um, mucolytics. So uh, that's then a drug that will uh, break up um, the mucus. Um, so you can imagine that is useful in cystic fibrosis. Um, so yeah, there are some papers listed here. Um, so just a brief summary, summary today of my talk. Um, so um, biology kind of, uh, yeah, requires a complex application of physics. And I think um, it's a very fun way to um, apply um, the physics. Um, I've, I hope that you've learned that uh, mucus is a, um, yeah, it's a um, really complex polymer um, and there's a lot of different interactions going on there. Um, and it's very um, sort of um, heterogeneous um, on the um, micro scale. Um, and so, yeah, it's got this protective function, um, but it also has other specific functions that I listed. <clears throat> you can then use um, the biophysical properties um, that we've learned to um, uh, design different therapies. Um, but there's actually, um, it's a relatively um, poorly understood field. Um, and there's a lot of different things listed here, such as the zeta potential of mucins, um, that all remain um, to be properly investigated. But like I said, it's quite a hard um, system to study because when you take something out of, um, when it becomes ex vivo, um, then it's it's no longer kind of functioning the same. And it's very hard to make something um, biometric that works um, perfectly. Um, so I'd just like to say, um, a thanks to um, the uh, lab. This was our Zoom meeting. They just let me do like a small run through of my talk. Um, and so uh, thanks to Dave Thornton um, for also um, supplying some of the images um, in my presentation today. Um, and also um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat now or um, yes, uh, say it on the audio thing, or I don't mind, you can email me as well. That's my email address, but yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know if the class can go through, but thank you very much um, for your talk. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to in the chat. Um, in while we're getting the first questions in, um, can you go back some? Oh, wait, we have one from. Uh, mm -hmm. We have, we have a lot in the chat. Okay, so let's start with them. You mentioned okay. that um, calcium two plus plays an important uh, ions play an important. Uh, role in patching mucins. Uh, do problems with calcium homeostasis result in problems with mucin production and secretion? Um, so I, I would imagine so that, um, yeah, you're going to get um, a poorer packaging um, of, the, of the, yeah, the mucins. But uh, yeah, um, I shouldn't think, it's not something I've particularly read any papers on. Um, but yeah, it's a very good point that's been raised. Um, I, I can see how, yeah, that would work, but I don't know whether that's, yeah, significant enough to have an impact. I'm sorry, yeah, I couldn't really answer that question, but it's a very good question, yeah. Okay, um, then we have a second question. Um, are there any diseases associated with too much slash too little of a specific music? Yeah, so, um, it's quite interesting, actually. So um, I, it's not something I mentioned in the talk, but um, so um, MUC1, um, this is one of the transmembrane mucins that we mentioned, um, is actually um, uh, upregulated in a lot of cancers. Um, and so um, 
it's it's something that can be used as like a um a good measure of um the presence of a cancer um because it's, yeah it's often present there but that's one to look into and then also um uh yeah there is a change of um of the expression of the relative expressions of um it, we talked about in the lungs of the muc um uh five um ac and the muc 5b and they kind of switch around um in a um, disease state um but yeah good question um okay uh then i have a question if you go back a few slides um to the uh let me just see if i can find it so uh, a bit more um just, just before and one more i think maybe um, that one? um the one with the um the one with the uh with the um oh god this is the problem i can't i don't know any biology terms if you go back a bit more then uh until i find it no um no, I must have skipped over it. Um, when you were just explaining these um, these cylindrical things um, just near the end of the talk. Yeah. Um, oh, so this one or the cilia? Like the beating? Uh, the fin the, the finia, probably. Um, okay. So uh, this one? Mm, yeah, this one, this one. Yeah. So this, this cilia, where, where exactly are they? Are these in, yeah. where were these? So um, um I um, where where like where are these placed in relation to the mucus? Yeah, so um these are actually the cilia on this diagram. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. so these these are what you'd have in your uh in your nose or any kind of mucous membrane. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that's what okay, that exactly. in, in those videos moving. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Do we have any other questions from the chat? Yeah, like I said, feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, um, thank you so much for your talk. Uh, oh, yeah, um, thank you very much for your talk. It was excellent. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Cool. Um, yeah, um, I, I appreciate it. A lot of content in there, um, but yeah, I was just trying to show off a lot of different things. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a very it's a very different from uh, from what our usual. Yeah, <laughs> um, but quite interesting. I'll have to look more into music later. Um, I think there's yeah. Okay, um, I will be leaving this meeting on. Um, for people to, uh, if people want to stay. But otherwise, I think we should declare an end to the official uh, thing and I'll stop the recording now. Okay, cool. Um,